Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. Um, I'm in the whip, so I, I don't mind my background. But okay, you're fine. You're fine. Uh, the uh, what you call it? that video? I ain't gonna hold you. That whole I watched the whole interview. I ain't just watched the whole clip. I watched the whole interview. Mm -hmm. Um, and in my personal opinion, it was like it was like a JV player in high school who's like never played football before, trying to like give advice to an NFL Hall of Famer. Like that shit was so funny. But um, uh, I I disagree with Umar on a lot of things. Um, I think politically, um, a lot of his politics are backwards. Um, but does he spit a lot of the times? Yeah, he do. Um, and in this particular instance, um, he was somewhat correct. Um, I mean, me personally, I really wasn't really offended because the community that I come from, uh, all the men in my life. Um, they all take care of their families. You know, they all do what they need to do. So I don't really be offended. I think the people who are offended are shawties who got, you know, knocked up by a bad dude or dudes who don't take care of their kids. Um, and uh, when we look at it from a political and uh, socioeconomic aspect, um, every other community takes care of others, um, regardless of if, in the, if they are in their family or not. That's why uh, other communities uh, tend to have more unity compared to the black community. Um, individualism, uh, objectively and factually, um, does not work and has never worked. Um, the majority of the time when we have gotten rights and have made advances as a people, it has been through uh, collective action and collective organizing. So I don't under, people who saying you should be an individual, that's just, that's just complete nonsense. And our community would be even more splintered and more divided if we all um, went to an uh, individual approach versus collective. Because every other race does um, uh, collective uh, politics except us. And that's why, you know, we're last and every other race is first. It is uh, ahead of us. Brother, what, when, you, when, you say, when you say that every other, every other group of people, um, they're more collective and they're not just individual and as black people we're just individual what 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 are you what are you what are you basing that off brother because i don't i don't know i don't know that to be true in 2023 well i mean if we're so collective and, and why... chad, one, chad one more thing really quick really quick really quick because uh -huh. um, because because obviously we're we're younger and i and i know there's i know there's some older people in here and you know i i i have seen on video i'm sure there was a time maybe 40 plus years ago to where, you know, um, especially in affluent black neighborhoods where um, we more, we, we were more, um, you know, uh, connected with each other, um, even even down to things like neighbors and things of that nature. I'm 100% I, I sure that we were more, you know, united in that sense, um, in that time period. Um, I can't speak, I can't speak for other communities, but today in 2023, especially someone that grew up in a, in a middle-class neighborhood. Um, and I went to public school. I went to school with all different types of people. Um, I didn't see, and I, and still I have not seen in 2023, um, other groups of people like just being more united and, you know, um, having more of a collective mindset than an individual mindset I, I honestly have not seen that brother okay you said um affluent middle class neighborhood or whatever um i grew up pretty middle class um i ain't never had to struggle a day in my life um but you said you know middle class black people st staying together or whatever um that's not really um uh, being quote unquote collective if you're only looking after black people of your own class and of your own um socioeconomic background, then that's like the opposite of being a collective. That's like, virtu that's virtually classism. And uh, obviously, if you look at the black community specifically, um, the black bourgeoisie is probably the biggest trader of the black community, by far. Um, they sell out their community more often than not for a couple coins. Um, and that's the main reason why our community as a whole is kind of left behind, I, I guess you could say, because you know, the black bourgeoisie is supposed to be, you know, the leaders of the community and whatnot. And a lot of them, you know, really don't, they really could care less about the community as long as, you know, they're getting theirs. 
And that's why, you know, our community really isn't doing well compared to others. And when we look at, uh, you know, white politicians or other racial politicians, um, when they go to their government offices and when they go to uh, their places of business, they're worried about the collective and um, uh, forward progress of their race. Whereas our community, we don't really do that. And it's be and there's a reason for that. It's because a lot of times when you're um, black and you're affluent, oftentimes you do have to sell out your own people in order to advance. And we've seen that, you know, decade after decade after decade. And we've had black scholars and um, black leaders talk about this ad nauseum. Okay. Hey, Chad, can you please go on mute for me? Uh, I got you. I just, I'm going to respond to what you said. And, and, and Johnny, hold tight, brother. I'm going to have you speak. Chad, I, look, brother, you, we, we've had this conversation before, and, you know, I'm, I'm still standing on my stance from the past, brother. I, I 100% respectfully, vehemently disagree with you when you say that, um, I don't know, black, pe black people that are well-off to do or to become a black person that's well-off to do, you have to sell off, you have to, like, sell out your own um, community. I don't, I don't agree with that, Chad. Like, I, I don't, I don't agree with that, brother. Um, and you talk about, you talk about other groups of people and when they get together, them discussing things for the, for that are for the betterment um, of their community. Like, brother, I, like where, what black men, as, as, as black men, as men that are supposed to be like leaders in our community, which one of these men are not doing that exact same thing? And, and like I was telling my friend last night, and I'm, and I'm gonna tell you this as well. And, and I wanna hear what you have to say about this too. Like I was saying earlier, I, I have no respect for people that voice their displeasure with what they see going on, but they're not actively doing anything in their community. They're not actively in the streets outside doing anything to, to make change or spark the change that they want to see. I have I have no respect for people that do that. And I don't, and I don't have I would never even waste my time having any discussion um, with people that do that. And I'm, not, I'm obviously not talking about you, but I say that to say um, as someone in you and you and I are both in this category and I don't know Johnny but as someone that is the complete opposite of the men that these women be talking about on this platform and just on the internet in general as men as young black men that have done what we need to do and are still doing what we need to do I think I think being a real life example being real life living proof is just as valuable or even or and can even be more valuable than being someone that's not in the that's not like that person that's in that position that that young black boy wants to be in being being a black man that hasn't really done anything but is trying to tell another young another young black man that okay just do x y and z because as kids at the end of the day kids listen to people kids are more receptive to people that have done what they're trying to do or are in the position that they're trying to be in so you know people can be at the boys and girls club um people can be part of uh nonprofits, any initiatives at the end of the day it just hits different when a young when a young black man or a young black woman is receiving advice from someone that is in the position that they eventually want to be with be in or has done something that they want to do. Um, so, you know, um, that's, that's just my whole stance on that, but I don't, I don't agree with you when you say you have to sell, you have to sell your own people out to, um, to, to like, to like be successful. I, I don't, I don't agree with that chat. When I, when I met, so when I met sell out, I'm not talking about like, like, I'm not talking about if you're a black business owner or if you are a, um, black entrepreneur that's not what i'm saying i'm saying the black political class as a whole and this has been something that's been documented by like multiple activists and multiple scholars for like decades they've literally talked about how certain um black politicians will do any and everything to get a leg up in the white power structure and will often sell out their own people i'm not talking about you know people who own businesses or um, people who live nice, lavish lifestyles. I'm talking about like black politicians. Those are the people who sell out our own people in order to pass certain legislation that may hurt our community. Like you owning a business, that's not that doesn't make you a sellout. 
That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the I'm talking about the black political class as a whole. And I personally have been to an HBCU where a lot of the kids are middle class. And I'm gonna be real, a lot of them hate poor black people. Like they they can't stand them. Like a lot of them do. I have uh, black older adults in my social circles, and they can't stand poor black people. And they say a lot of the same stuff about poor black people that you hear on Fox News. They'll say, oh, why don't why are the, why are their pants sagging? Why are they doing this? Why are they doing that? Like they literally be sounding just like racist YT people. But then you okay. want to say you want to help your community? Like, come on now. Okay, look, get here. Go, okay, go, go on, go on me real quick, bro. Uh, and I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to speak on uh, two more things. Johnny, hold tight, brother. I see you. So I, the I want to speak on the whole um, hating poor black people. And then even though Johnny said, and Johnny, you don't get an opportunity to talk, but you know, since you said you watched the whole interview chat. When I said, um, because I don't have I don't have that part of the video up, but I did see this part. Um, when he said, when he talked about Chad, he talked about essentially what that man said. And you said you watched the whole interview, so you can co-sign what I'm about to say. Essentially, what he said is that, you know, um, to the single mothers in our community, um, as black men, we're failing, we're failing, we're failing that that young man, um, we're failing those young men. If we're not taking time out of our lives to dedicate to like you know make make them better um you know involve them in sports just take time just take two three hours out of our weekend to spend time with them um and teach them about life teach them about manhood so i want you to speak on that chad but before you speak on that the whole hating black people thing like i said i got into a fight with my friend last night and um chad we have to stop we have to start uh, you know i speak on this all the time we have to stop trying to make it seem like um, everyone can go, like everyone is going to make it. Um, that is that is not the case. That hasn't ever been the case, and that's not ever going to be the case. And that and that's just not in our community. That's in that's in all communities. Like everyone is not going to be noble. Everyone is not going to be Chad, and everyone is not going to be Johnny. Some people some people are going to have to be the cashier at the gas station. Some people are going to have to be um, dropping the fries and dropping the burgers at McDonald's. And you you know what? You know what the difference is? You know what the difference is, Chad, from from you and myself and, and, and Johnny and from other brothers is that is that some people like, again, you cannot help someone that does not want to help themselves, Chad. You cannot want more for someone than they want for themselves. So I could I could I could give all the quote unquote encouragement I could um I can I can provide all the the resources I can tell people about scholarships I can tell people about grants I can tell other black men about the benefits of education I can tell other black men about the benefits of dedication and hard work if someone does not want better for themselves if someone does not want to do better for themselves it all goes in vain at the end of the day and me as a black man and, and black man as a collective, as accomplished, successful black men that have done what they need to do and are out here doing what they need to do, you cannot say that because I don't take time out of my life to like exhaust all this time and energy to these group of people that don't want better for themselves, that I'm an individual and that I don't care about the collective. Like, like come on, bro. At the end of the day, if, if a man don't want if a man don't want better for himself, if he doesn't want, everyone is not ambitious. Everyone is not motivated to like be someone or be something in life. Everyone doesn't wake up feeling determined and wanting to go get it. And that's okay. Some people, some people have no problem being mediocre. Some people have no problem being average. Some people have no problem being below average. And it's as, as, a, as a person, as a human being, but especially as a man, you cannot you cannot look at me and say that I just don't care about these group of people when these group when a large percentage of these group of people don't want better for themselves. It's one thing. It's one thing to like. It's one thing to be at a to have like a um, like we can't control the cards that we're dealt in life. Like you know, you and I, we weren't born. We weren't born to rich families. Um, you know, I have I have West African parents. I have parents that literally came to um, America with nothing. I have my both of my parents have master's degrees. My dad has been a a, a, a a multiple six figure earner for several years. Like, what's what excuses do people have for not wanting to be better and wanting better for themselves? So I want you to speak on that, Chad. And then I also I want you lastly to speak on the whole 
um, you know, black men dedicating dedicating their time to like you know children that aren't theirs. This is okay. someone said. Someone said this is self hating rhetoric. Exactly. Well, if it's self hating rhetoric, then I'm gonna I'm gonna keep I'm gonna stand on the self hating rhetoric that I just said. Go ahead, Chad. Okay. Um. So there were a number of things said there. Um. I'm gonna say this and then I'm I'm gonna drop because I got something to do today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. But uh, I think you said, you know, some people have to do certain jobs. Some people have to do this. Some people have to do that or whatever. Um, you're kind of like giving uh, an analysis of how basically, you know, the society that we live in is capitalism. And basically, um, in order for capitalism to function, you have to have a lower class. Um, and we've had, you know, multiple scholars and multiple, you know, activists throughout black history who have talked about the fact that um basically in america you're going to have uh certain people um who are going to be on the lower end of the totem pole because we live in a um capitalist society and capitalism is inherently exploitative and oppressive um but uh the solution to that is stuff that you know black scholars and activists have been talking about for decades which would be an alternative economic system, but obviously that's a conversation for another day. But you saying that, you know, you can't teach people to, you know, want to go and do opportunities for themselves or whatever. Um, and if we're going to be like completely honest, um, if we're talking about a lot of black, you know, children in America, they did not get the same opportunities that you and I did. I mean, me, I went to an, I went to an high school, that cost $10,000 a year. The average American, forget just black American, the average American can't even afford to go to a school like that. If we're talking about opportunities and people being able to you know, capitalize on those opportunities, the majority of Americans don't have the type of money to even be able to attain these quote unquote opportunities. When we're talking about these issues, we have we can't just look at it as, oh, this person didn't do that, that's why they're this way. You have to look at the overwhelming data and the overwhelming, you know, narrative that we see. Um, and a lot of black Americans do not have the same type of wealth, do not have the same type of uh, opportunities as other groups because of the uh, legacy of slavery and the fact that we were extracted, you know, billions of dollars of labor, uh, billions of dollars of free labor that we were never um, paid back for. So when we talk about these issues, we can't just look at it from, oh, you, I made it and you didn't. So therefore, you're just lazy. That's that is it's not self hating rhetoric. It's just like Republican talking points that are used to prop up certain black people so that they can say, see, the system does work. This black person made it and you did it. So stop blaming racism, even though uh, when we look at the history and the data, um, systemic racism is probably the number one culprit as to why um, black people aren't able to attain a certain level of wealth and they're not able to get certain opportunities. They're blocked off because of systemic racism. That's like that's not that's not really like an opinion. That's like objectively fact that has been documented long before I was born, long before you was born. Malcolm X and Martin Luther King were talking about this stuff in the 60s. Uh, Fred Hampton was talking about this in the 60s. Kwame Ture and Stokely Tar Carmichael were talking about this stuff in the 90s. So in order to have a proper analysis of uh, not even just the video that you have up in the interview, but the entire collective of the community, you have to talk about um, everything that coincides instead of just saying, I made it, you didn't. So therefore the system works and you need to just pull yourself up by the bootstraps. That's like a very like, you know, eighth grade analysis of the complex predicament that black people live through in America. But I'm gonna drop, I'm gonna be in the oh, comments. Hold on, hold on, bro. Last, last thing, last thing before you drop, I want you to speak uh -huh. on I want you to speak on what he was saying, what Dr. Umar was saying about men taking time out of their lives to dedicate to other young men. So whether whether it be whether it be a boys and girls club type of thing, or whether they see a single mom, um, what that may be struggling, and like like you said, um, getting that young man involved in activity. I want you to speak on that. Do you do you agree well, with him when he says that? Yeah, I mean, I I do agree that if you are a black man and you, you know, if you're raising a family, I think that 
I wouldn't say is this an obligation, but you should be motivated to try to help other black children in your community. Um, I played football from when I was, you know, seven or six until I was, you know, 22. And I've had coaches who have mentored thousands of black men in the area so that they didn't fall victim to the streets. And football was obviously an outlet for them. And I have personal, I have coaches who coached me when I was 14 or 15 who have gone on to create, you know, groups that uh, combat uh, gun violence initiatives. Um, I have uh, coaches who have uh, created certain things so that kids do not fall victim to the street. So I, that's why me personally, the video didn't really, you know, give me all up in a bunch because I have black men in my own lives who do try to help the community any way that they can. I have a uh, uncle personally who has taken his own money to uh, mentor uh, black children. And he has taken his own money to take us to the African-American Museum in Philadelphia and Washington, D.C. so that he can uh, make sure that black kids in his community, in his church, um, uh, know their history so that they know that they are black and know that they are they should be proud to be black. So I have men in my community who have done wonders for thousands of black men in the Philadelphia area alone. So that's why I can't really get, you know, upset about what he said, because I have black men in my life who do that, which is why I do everything in my capacity so that eventually I'll be in a position so that I can help my community and so that I can be an example for them in taking care of my family with a black woman and also helping others in the community who may not be as fortunate as I am. All right, Chad, I appreciate you, brother. Okay, I, I'm, I'm, right, I'm, 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 I'm